God is around us. When you open the television or read the newspaper, so many dead bodies. Tsaka hindi lang dead bodies ko eh. Tataka ako bakit yung parating madudumi ang paa, parating nakachinelas. Bakit po? At sobrang daming ganoon. So pag nakakahihims ka, sabi nga yung sa reporter, safe siya. Kasi puro nakachinelas ng bali. Bakit ano? Parang tapos po yung year, what's happening in the world? Ano ito yung si Marami, for example? Ano? yung mga nana, yung mga baka. You see, so many bodies uh, suffering. Pag lakihan mo pa yung mundo, uh, yung mga biktima ng ISIS, yung mga refugees from different parts of the world, nagkakandaman ka, you've heard of Lampedusa and other Lampedusas. Uh, uh, two weeks ago, we had our conference, a communion of communities, uh, Mary Hill, ito natin na rin, Mary Shore. And we went to exposure areas po sa aking lugar. We saw a place for human trafficking, yung mga bata in traffic. The youngest was two years old. Uh, uh, women, uh, children, na uh, abuse. We went to some, some internal, very internal na uh, squatter area po na sobrang daming drug drug. Nasa lang yung mga drug list. At ano ginagawa sa yung food doon. So many bodies po na uh, we can see suffering in poverty. So I was so struck yesterday with what I just checked it for. It's, it's the president of the CBCP for now, Archbishop Vindiega, who said, oppose the culture of death or victim rights. So parang lakas na natin sa akin, natulog ako at nagisig na yun ang iniisip. And I thought now, do not betray Christ in this body. Ito yung nakakita natin mo. No? Uh, the body of Christ suffering. I don't know, the body has never been so important. <laughs> Itong inaral ko for a long time po, parang has never been so important until this time. You know, with so many bodies that are suffering. When you talk about body po, you also talk about the senses. On the other hand, napakaraming suffering bodies. On the other hand, sobrang naman pong turn to the body. Ito ang nangyari sa lipunan natin, ano? Napakaraming pagpapaganda, pagpapapayat, pagpapabago ng mukha, pagpapabago ng gender, babae, lalaki, partner, gene. We have become so health conscious, which is also good. There has never been so much concern about the body. Huh? Kaya, the body of Christ becomes even more important. What does it mean not to be the body of Christ at this time? Pag sinabi ng senses, oh, body is always connected to the senses. Dalawa po ang resulta niyan eh. Either, no, it leads you to a sensitivity sa mga nangyayari sa ating panigil. You become more aware of it. And in fact, yung mga, mga journalism po sa tinapos ko nung nasa college yan. No? So, paklasin ko mula doon mga editor sa mga journalism. Nagkakasakit na po sige. Magkakausap lang kami ng mga pagkakabu. Nagkakasakit po sila literally. No, high blood, sugar, because of what's happening, they don't want to report anymore. It, it's a continuous source of stress. No? So do you become more sensitive when you talk about money? Or do you become more sensual? That's the other side, you know? No? So, uh, drug addiction, escape sa sex, uh, vices, etc. Hindi tayo distant sa issue na ito, no? So tayo po as body of Christ and tayo as formators, kayo as leading the body of Christ. What does it mean po for you no? in terms of mission? In a special way po, it reminds me of census with David kasi census ang pinag-uusapan. So malapit sa census with David, di ba? In fact, the same way po. Pero census fidelium, officially, technologically, no? ito yung ba, uh, the wisdom of the faith passed on from one generation to the next. No? Ang sinasabi ko ng simbahan natin, Lumen Gentium 12, bawat isa may sense of the faith. Bawat isa, census fidelium. At itong sense of the faith na ito ay ginagamit in a prophetic teaching way. Sabi sa Lumen Gentium 12, from the bishop to the last of the baptized. Kahaba po, no? Pero lahat may sense of the faith. 
So, pag tinitig mo po yung nangyayari sa ating film, now saan ka, ano kaya ang sense of the film? Parang iba-iba na po tayo, di ba? You know? Political stand, yung tingin natin sa nangyayari ngayon, tingin natin sa drug war. Ano yung sense of the film? Parang napakalirap makapak. At uh, paano pag tinatsa, pa, paano ba yan? Ano ba yung sense of the film at this time? Sabi nga, di ba, ang laban ng mga ito ay labanan sa loob ng Pilipino. Ano ang nasa loob ng Pilipino at this time? Sabi ni Iba, kapag in a time of globalization, nawawala na yung pinakaawakan, the laws of social anchors. So, ano ba yung pinakaawakan natin sa panahon pala tayo? Ano yung napaka magandang panahon? Ano yung sense of the faith at this time? Pero po ang tatong ko, where does a baptize build up his or her sense of the faith? Kung lahat ng binyagan po, 10% lang ang nagsisimba or 15%, the latest survey po is lower. Nasaan ang pagkakataon to build up the sense of the faith? Kasi ito yung pinapasa mo na teaching ng simbahan from one generation to the next. Eh. So saan mo yung binibuild up? Kung 10% lang ang sisiba, saan po? So pag sa Lisa, is it enough to build them up? And that when issues face them as families, as individuals, as a barangay, that they know where Christ stands and nasaan ang katawan ng Christian. Kung nabibuild up ba sa Misa, sa Omidya? Kung in both those organizations, siguro may formation na regular. No? Pero, tako, yung katisis mo ba kapag binyag, kasal? Is it enough? No? So, tako, yung, yung, uh, yung loob ng Pilipino, yung sense niya no, ng pananampalataya, Nagja-challenge tayo. Kasi yun ang bumubig sa nagawa ni Cristo eh. Yung unang nagsisense sa nangyayari sa ating pagigil. Ang pag-asa ko po, nasa small little good news. Katulad ng binabangit natin from the start. Katulad ng tradisyon no, na pinag-upisahan natin. Bakit po? Kasi, kaya nga siguro inisip ng mga apostolis yun eh. There in a family neighborhood setting, there can be a Christian presence across generations. Sabi po nila, we carry in our bodies, no? yung parang nagtumatakas sa katawan natin, yung mga naranasan natin sa buhay, which is really true. Nung bata pa po ko, hikain po ako, yung kapitbahayan namin may factory na malaki. So parati bumubuga ng uso. So parati po ko minihikan. Hindi ko po alam, I was too young, but the neighborhood did something about it. Di ko alam kung gusto na bigay si Paul or the regular neighborhood na mayan. And that factory ko was closed. Tumatak po yung sa isip ko, what a neighborhood can do. So yun din siguro yung ginawa ng isang neighborhood community na nagbabible sharing, na nagtutunong nga, na nagdagamayan, maliliit na bagay, malalaking bagay. Pero tumatatak sa katawan ng mga taong nandunod. Kasi involved po sila. At para sa mga bata na doon na lumalaki, nakikita nila, ah, ganun pala ang nangyari kapag may baha, kapag may bagyo. Ah, ganun pala yung tulong na ginawa sa marami. Huh? Uh, Tumatatak po, kaya siguro yung pag-asa na saan ba natututo ng sense of the faith. Nakikita ko yung pag-asa, yung maliliit na pamayanan sa kapitbayan, na pwede pagnilayan ang sinasabi ng Evangelio, na pwede kumilos kahit pa paano sa kapitbahayan. Or mas ma-challenge pa ng humilos. Kaya nga po sinasabi ko, yung maliliit na ating mga barabat ng ganyan, naisip ko parati, yun nga yung bisi na sa barangay. Baka po ang pagkatuto ay hindi na pinapasa sa pamagitan lang ng katisismo, sa pamagitan lang ng teoriya, sa pamagitan lang ng pagtuturo, no? kapag merong sakramento at pagdiriwang. Baka po ang katisismo nangyayari sa buhay. Kaya po po sa atang nangyayari yung labanan ng pananampalataya sa pang-araw-araw na paraan. Doon po nakikita ang nabibuild up yung sense of the faith. Kaya po po pwede pong i-redefine yung sense of fidelity. Sasabihin ko po, it is a collective, experiential, faithless love. Parang hindi na ata kakayanin na mag-aaral ng teoriya kasi ituturo yung teoriya. O nag-aaral ng katisismo kasi ituturo yung mga kapitisa, ituloy kapitisa. Parang 
Ang kailangan na talaga eh ang salita ng Diyos bukas para sa lahat. They can reflect on it. They can allow it to challenge them. They can do something small or big in response to the Word of God in daily settings. Talaga ito, doon na tutunan in an authentic way ano ang sense of the faith ng isang Christian. Experiential and collective. Kasi parang ganun naman yung paraan ni Jesus noong unang panahon. Tsaka ng kanyang mga disipli. Sa ganito pong paraan, nakikita ko na pwede masustain ang pananampalataya sa susunod na relasyon. We are at a very opportune time para isang buhay ang communion and mission, lalo-lalo na sa lipunan natin ngayon. Parang all or nothing ang buhay ngayon. So, I don't know po, every time I say body of Christ, hindi kilabutan po ako. So, and uh, it makes me think of communion and mission in a different way, very challenging. We would just like to end ito part po ng ating reflection on the body of Christ by using also our body as a closing prayer and we would like to teach you a body prayer and we would like to use the words of a man who lived a life with a mission and that is no less than Fra St. Francis of Assisi. We would like to use his words, O Signore, Fadime, un instrumento de la tua pace. Lord, make an instrument of your peace. Kasi alam po natin, if we look around us, I think, yan po yung pinakakailangan natin. And peace not only outside, but also peace that is inside. And we, when we think of peace, we think of Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Kasi yun lang naman po yung gusto natin ipalaganap sa lahat ng sulong ng ating parokya, sa lahat ng sulong ng ating diocesis. Walang iba kundi si Kristo ang prinsipe ng kapayapaan. So, with this prayer, we would like to use four gestures. Later, I would ask you to stand up, pero mamaya na po. Ang ating pong mga gesture, we would like to use our hands again. And we have four gestures. Our opening position is feet comfortably apart, not too much apart, just to maintain balance, both feet flat on the ground. Open palm position, we put it on our side. Sabi po nila, a lot of Asian religion, When they pray, they would always start with an open hand, with an open palm. Kasi sabi po nila, when you open your palm, you allow blood to flow freely to your body. When you are tense, when you are angry, usually you close your palm. But we would like to allow blood, we would like to allow life, we would like to allow the spirit to flow through us, so we open our palm. Sa non-verbal communication, an open palm symbolizes honesty and sincerity. In front of our God, in front of our King, we would like to be honest, we would like to be sincere. So from this position, we would like to embrace the peace that is around us and put it in our heart. So slowly we put our hands over our hearts and bow down a little. And from this position, we just put our hands to the side until we achieve this position. And then we put our hands, we raise our hands upward until we achieve this position. And then slowly we put our hands in a prayer position and do a full bow. What does each gesture mean? When we put our hands over our hearts and bow down a little, it is a sign of reverence, it is a sign of respect. Kung mapapansin po natin in our image sa mga Belen, no? if you look at the Belen, Mary and the other characters there would always have a hand over their hearts, bowing down a little, looking at the baby Jesus as a sign of reverence, as a sign of respect. When we put our hands in this position, in prayer they call this the orante position or the surrendering position. Because we would like to surrender to God's peace. And maybe we can ask also ourselves, what area in my life do I need to surrender to God at this time so that that part of my life would have peace? When we put our hands over our head, We form a channel or a way na kakabubutay ng daluyan o daanan mula sa langit patungo sa atin. Because in this prayer, we would like to ask God to make us a channel of His peace, 
a channel of His hope, a channel of His love, or whatever it is that we would like to channel, no, God through our body. <laughs> and when we put our hands together and do a full bow, this is a gesture of worship, a gesture of humility. In Thailand, if their king would pass by, they would bow down as low as they can yung ibang ako humahalik pa sa lupa. Kasi para sa kanila, sa harap ng kanilang hari, kapantay lang nila ay lupa. Gusto rin natin expression in front of our king, in front of our God, we are nothing. Kapantay lang natin ay lupa. So as we do the prayer of St. Francis and the gesture, O Signore, Fadime, un instrumento de la tua pace. We will do po this gesture in five sets and in each set we will face the four direction. So una po we will face the front and then we will face the right after one set and then the second set and then we face the right until we have faced the four direction. That means we would like to bring the peace of God in all corners, in all areas, in all parts of the world. Ayun po yung gusto natin kalit. Dalin si Cristo at yung kanyang kapayapa. So can I invite you now to kindly stand up? And again, for a few moments of silence, let's just bow down our heads and close our eyes. As we reflect on our body as an instrument of God's mission, as we reflect on the sensus fidelity of our sense of faith, Jesus as the head of the body, Jesus as the Prince of Peace. Let us offer to God our entire body, mind, heart, and soul. Let us offer to Him our bodies. Let us offer to Him our mission, our calling, our vocation. That through us, peace may be channeled. That through us, peace may, may be experienced by people in all situations, in all places.
this we pray in Jesus' name, the Prince of Peace. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Amen.